Act One of Edward the Second. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe. Dramatis Personae. Piers Gaveston. Read by Chuck Williamson. King Edward the Second. Read by Martin Geeson. Lancaster and Barclay. Read by Todd. Mortimer Sr. Monks and Matrevis. By Rick F. Mortimer Jr. Read by M. B. The Earl of Kent. Read by Ariel Lipshaw. The Earl of Warwick. Read by Alan Matstone. The Bishop of Coventry. The Bishop of Winchester. And the Bishop of Canterbury. Read by Algie Pug. Queen Isabella, read by Elizabeth Clett. Pembroke, Mower, and Gurney. Read by Thomas Cardwell. Prince Edward. Read by Charlotte Duckett. Spencer Jr. Read by Robin King. Baldock. Read by Omwan de Tree. First Poor Man, the Earl of Arundel, and First Lord. Read by Lambda. Second Poor Man, Horse Boy, Levune. Abbot of Neath, and Champion, read by Elizabeth Clett. Third Poor Man, Rice Ap Howell, and Trussell, read by Amanda Friday. The King's Niece, read by Libby Gone. Messenger, and Herald, read by Capricia Page. Spencer Senior, read by Algie Pug. Lester, read by Joseph Abel. Sir John of Aino. Lightborn, and Soldier, read by Alan Matstone, and narrated by Elizabeth Clatt. Act One, Scene One, A Street in London. Enter Gaveston, reading on a letter that was brought him from the King. My father is deceased. Come, Gaveston and share the kingdom with thy dearest friend. <laughs> ah, words that make me surfeit with delight. What greater bliss can hap to Gaveston than live and be the favorite of a king? Sweet prince, I come these, these, thy amorous lines might have enforced me to have swum from France, and, like Leander gasped upon the sand, so thou wouldst smile and take me in thy arms. Oh, the sight of London to my exiled eyes is as Elysium to a new-come soul. Not that I love the city or the men, but that it harbors him I hold so dear, the king upon whose bosom let me lie, and with the world be still at enmity. What need the Arctic people love starlight, to whom the sun shines both by day and night? Farewell, base stooping to the lordly peers, my knee shall bow to none but to the king. As for the multitude that are but sparks, raked up in embers of their poverty, uh, Tonti, I'll fawn first on the wind that glanceth at my lips and flieth away. But how now? What are these? Enter three poor men. Such as desire your worship's service. What canst thou do? I can ride. Uh, but I have no horses. What art thou? A traveller. Let me see. Thou wouldst do well to wit at my trencher and tell me lies at dinner-time. And, as I like your discoursing, I'll have you. And what art thou? A soldier that hath served against the Scot. Why? There are hospitals for such as you. I have no war. 
and therefore sir be gone farewell and perish by a soldier's hand that wouldst reward them with an hospital aside ay ay these words of his move me as much as if a goose should play the porpentine and dart her plumes thinking to pierce my breast but yet it is no pain to speak these men fair i'll flatter these and make them live in hope you know that i come lately out of france and yet i have not viewed my lord the king if i speed well i'll entertain you all we thank your worship i have some business leave me to myself we will wait here about the court exeunt do these are not men for me i must have wanton poets pleasant wits musicians that with touching of a string may draw the pliant king which way i please music and poetry is his delight therefore i'll have italian masks by night sweet speeches comedies and pleasing shows and in the day when we shall walk abroad like sylvan nymphs my pages shall be clad my men like satyrs grazing on the lawns shall with their goat feet dance an antic hay sometime a lovely boy in diane's shape with hair that gilds the water as it glides crownets of pearl about his naked arms and in his sportful hands an olive tree to hide those parts which men delight to see shall bathe him in the spring and there hard by one like Actaeon peeping through the grove shall by the angry goddess be transformed and running in the likeness of an heart by yelping hounds pulled down and seem to die such things as these best please his majesty oh my lord here comes the king and the nobles from the parliament i'll stand aside retires enter the king lancaster mortimer senior mortimer junior edmund earl of kent guy earl of warwick etc lancaster my lord aside that earl of lancaster do i abhor will you not grant me this aside oh in spite of them i'll have my will and these two mortimers that cross me thus shall know i am displeased if you love us my lord hate gaveston aside that villain mortimer i'll be his death mine uncle here this earl and i myself was sworn to your father at his death that he should ne'er return into the realm and know my lord ere i will break my oath this sword of mine that should offend your foes shall sleep within the scabbard at thy need and underneath thy banners march who will for mortimer will hang his armour up aside mon dieu well mortimer i'll make thee rue these words beseems it thee to contradict thy king frownst thou thereat aspiring lancaster the sword shall plane the furrows of thy brows and hew these knees that now are grown so stiff i will have gaveston and you shall know what danger tis to stand against your king aside well done ned my lord why do you thus incense your peers that naturally would love and honour you but for that base and obscure gaveston four earldoms have i besides lancaster darby salisbury lincoln leicester 
These will I sell to give my soldiers pay ere Gaveston shall stay within the realm. Therefore, if he become, expel him straight. Barons and earls, your pride hath made me mute. But now I'll speak, and to the proof I hope. I do remember in my father's days, Lord Percy of the North, being highly moved, braved Mowbray in presence of the king, for which, had not his highness loved him well, he should have lost his head. But with his look the undaunted spirit of Percy was appeased, and Mowbray and he were reconciled. Yet dare you brave the king unto his face. Brother, revenge it, and let these their heads preach upon poles for trespass of their tongues. O oh, our heads! Ay, yours, and therefore I would wish you grant. Bridle thy anger, gentle Mortimer. I cannot, nor I will not. I must speak. Cousin, our hands, I hope, shall fence our heads, and strike off his that makes you threaten us. Come, uncle, let us leave the brain-sick king, and henceforth parley with our naked swords. Wiltshire hath men enough to save our heads. All Warwickshire shall love him for my sake. And northward Gaveston hath many friends. Adieu, my lord, and either change your mind, or look to see the throne where you should sit to float in blood, and at thy wanton head the glozing head of thy base minion thrown. Exeunt all but King Edward, Kent, Gaveston, and attendants. I cannot brook these haughty menaces. Am I a king, and must be overruled? Brother, display my ensigns in the field. I'll bandy with the barons and the earls, and either die or live with Gaveston. Oh, I can no longer keep me from my lord. Comes forward. What? Gaveston? Oh, welcome! Oh. <laughs> Oh, kiss not my hand, embrace me, Gaveston, as I do thee. Why shouldst thou kneel? Knowest thou not who I am? Thy friend, thyself, another Gaveston. Not Hylas was more mourned of Hercules than thou hast been of me since thy exile. And since I went from hence, no soul in hell hath felt more torment than poor Gaveston. Oh, I know it. Brother, welcome, oh, my friend. <laughs> Now let the treacherous Mortimer's conspire, and that high-minded Earl of Lancaster. I have my wish in that I joy thy sight, and sooner shall the sea o'erwhelm my land than bear the ship that shall transport thee hence. I here create thee Lord High Chamberlain, Chief Secretary to the State, and me, Earl of Cornwall, King and Lord of Man. My lord, these titles far exceed my worth. Brother, the least of these may well suffice for one of greater birth than Gaveston. Cease, brother, for I cannot brook these words. Thy worth, sweet friend, is far above my gifts. Therefore, to equal it, receive my heart. If for these dignities thou be envied, I'll give thee more, for but to honour thee is Edward pleased with kingly regiment. Fearst thou thy person, thou shalt have a guard. Wantest thou gold, go to my treasury. Wouldst thou be loved and feared, receive my seal, save or condemn and in our name command what so thy mind affects or fancy likes <laughs> it shall suffice me to enjoy your love which whiles i have i think myself as great as caesar riding in the roman street with captive kings at his triumphant car enter the bishop of coventry whither goes my lord of coventry so fast to celebrate your father's exequies 
but is that wicked gaveston returned ay priest and lives to be revenged on thee that wert the only cause of his exile tis true and but for reverence of these robes thou shouldst not plod one foot beyond this place i did no more than i was bound to do and gaveston unless thou be reclaimed as then i did incense the parliament so will i now and thou shalt back to france saving your reverence you must pardon me laying hands on the bishop oh, throw off his golden mitre rend his stole and in the channel christen him anew ah oh, brother lay not violent hands on him for he'll complain unto the sea of rome let him complain unto the sea of hell i'll be revenged on him for my exile no spare his life but seize upon his goods be thou lord bishop and receive his rents and make him serve thee as thy chaplain i give him thee here use him as thou wilt he shall to prison and there die in bolts ay to the tower the fleet where thou wilt for this offence be thou a curse of god who's there convey this priest to the tower true true but in the meantime gaveston away and take possession of his house and goods come follow me and thou shalt have my guard to see it done and bring thee safe again what should a priest do with so fair a house a prison may beseem his holiness exeunt scene two near the king's palace enter on one side both the mortimers on the other warwick and lancaster tis true the bishop is in the tower and goods and body given to gaveston what will they tyrannize upon the church ah wicked king accursed gaveston this ground which is corrupted with their steps shall be their timeless sepulchre or mine well let that peevish frenchman guard him sure unless his breast be sword-proof he shall die how now why droops the earl of lancaster wherefore is guy of warwick discontent that villain gaveston is made an earl an earl ay and besides lord chamberlain of the realm and secretary too and lord of man we may not nor we will not suffer this why post we not from hence to levy men my lord of cornwall now at every word and happy is the man whom he vouchsafes for veiling of his bonnet one good look thus arm in arm the king and he doth march nay more the guard upon his lordship waits and all the court begins to flatter him thus leaning on the shoulder of the king he nods and scorns and smiles at those that pass doth no man take exceptions at the slave all stomach him but none dare speak a word ah oh, that bewrays their baseness lancaster were all the earls and barons of my mind will hail him from the bosom of the king and at the court gate hang the peasant up who swoln with venom of ambitious pride will be the ruin of the realm and us enter the bishop of canterbury and an attendant here comes my lord of canterbury's grace his countenance betrays he is displeased first were his sacred garments rent and torn then laid they violent hands upon him next himself imprisoned and his goods are seized this certified the pope away take horse exit attendant my lord will you take arms against the king what need i god himself is up in arms when violence is offered to the church then will you join with us that be his peers to banish or behead that gaveston what else my lords for it concerns me near the bishopric of coventry is his enter the queen madam whither walks your majesty so fast unto the forest gentle mortimer to live in grief and baleful discontent for now my lord the king regards me not but dotes upon the love of gaveston he claps his cheeks 
and hangs about his neck, smiles in his face and whispers in his ears, and when I come he frowns, as who should say, Go whither thou wilt, seeing I have Gaveston. Is it not strange that he is thus bewitched? Madam, return unto the court again. That sly, inveigling Frenchman we exile, or lose our lives. And yet, ere that day come, the king shall lose his crown, for we have power and courage, too, to be revenged at full. But yet lift not your swords against the king. No, but we'll lift Gaveston from hence. And war must be the means, or he'll stay still. Then let him stay. For rather than my lord shall be oppressed by civil mutinies, I will endure a melancholy life, and let him frolic with his minion. My lords, to ease all this, but hear me speak. We, and the rest that are his counsellors, will meet, and with a general consent, confirm his banishment with our hands and seals. What we confirm, the king will frustrate. Then may we lawfully revolt from him. But say, my lord, where shall this meeting be? At the new temple. Content. And in the meantime, I'll entreat you all to cross to Lambeth, and there stay with me. Come then, let's away. Madam, farewell. Farewell, sweet Mortimer. And for my sake, forbear to levy arms against the king. Aye, if words will serve. If not, I must. Exeunt. Scene three. A street in London. Enter Gaveston and the Earl of Kent. Edmund, the mighty prince of Lancaster, that hath more earldoms than an ass can bear, and both the Mortimers, two goodly men, with Guy of Warwick, that redoubted knight, are gone towards Lambeth, <laughs> there let them remain. Exeunt. Scene four. The new temple. Enter Lancaster, Warwick, Pembroke, Mortimer Senior, Mortimer Junior, the Bishop of Canterbury, and attendants. Here is the form of Gaveston's exile. May it please your lordship to subscribe your name. Give me the paper. He subscribes, as do the others after him. Quick, quick, my lord. I long to write my name. But long I more to see him banished hence. The name of Mortimer shall fright the king, unless he be declined from that base peasant. Enter the king, Gaveston, and Kent. What, are you moved that Gaveston sits here? It is our pleasure. We will have it so. Your grace doth well to place him by your side, for nowhere else the new earl is so safe. What man of noble birth can brook this sight? Quam male conveniunt I. See what a scornful look the peasant casts. Can kingly lions fawn on creeping ants? Ignoble vassal, that like Phaeton aspirest unto the guidance of the sun. Their downfall is at hand, their forces down. We will not thus be faced and overpeered. Lay hands on that traitor Mortimer. Lay hands on that traitor Gaveston. Is this the duty that you owe your king? We know our duties. Let him know his peers. Whither will you bear him? Stay, or ye shall die. We are no traitors. Therefore threaten not. No, threaten not, my lord. But pay them home. Were I a king? Thou villain, wherefore talk'st thou of a king that hardly art a gentleman by birth? Were he a peasant, being my minion, I'll make the proudest of you stoop to him. My lord, you may not thus disparage us. Away, I say, with hateful Gaveston. And with the Earl of Kent that favours him. Attendants remove Kent and Gaveston. Nay, then lay violent hands upon your king. Here, Mortimer, sit thou in Edward's throne. Warwick and Lancaster, wear you my crown. Was ever king thus overruled as I? Learn then to rule us better, and the realm. What we have done our heart blood shall maintain. Think you that we can brook this upstart pride? Ah, anger and wrathful fury stops my speech. Why are you moved? Be patient, my lord, 
and see what we, your counsellors, have done. My lords, let us now all be resolute, and either have our wills or lose our lives. Meet you for this, proud, over-daring peers. Ere my sweet Gaveston shall part from me, this isle shall fleet upon the ocean and wander to the unfrequented ind you know that i am legate to the pope on your allegiance to the sea of rome subscribe as we have done to his exile curse him if you refuse and then may we depose him and elect another king ay there it goes but yet i will not yield curse me depose me do the worst you can then linger not my lord but do it straight remember how the bishop was abused either banish him that was the cause thereof or i will presently discharge these lords of duty and allegiance due to thee aside oh it boots me not to threat i must speak fair the legate of the pope will be obeyed my lord you shall be chancellor of the realm thou lancaster high admiral of our fleet young mortimer and his uncle shall be earls and you lord warwick president of the north and thou of wales huh, if this content you not make several kingdoms of this monarchy and share it equally amongst you all so i may have some nook or corner left to frolic with my dearest gaveston nothing shall alter us we are resolved come come subscribe why should you love him whom the world hates so <gasps> because he loves me more than all the world Oh, none but rude and savage-minded men would seek the ruin of my gaveston you that be noble-born should pity him you that are princely-born should shake him off for shame subscribe and let the lamb depart urge him my lord are you content to banish him the realm <laughs> i see i must and therefore am content <laughs> instead of ink i'll write it with my tears the king is lovesick for his minion tis done and now a cursed hand fall off give it to me i'll have it published in the street i'll see him presently dispatched away now is my heart at ease and so is mine this will be good news to the common sort be it or no he shall not linger here exeunt all except king edward how fast they run to banish him i love they would not stir were it to do me good why should a king be subject to a priest proud rome that hatchest such imperial grooms for these thy superstitious taper lights wherewith thy anti-christian churches blaze i'll fire thy crazed buildings and enforce the papal towers to kiss the lowly ground with slaughtered priests may tiber's channel swell and banks raised higher with their sepulchres as for the peers that back the clergy thus if i be king not one of them shall live re-enter gaveston my lord i hear it whispered everywhere that i am banished and must fly the land tis true sweet gaveston or oh, were it false the legate of the pope will have it so and thou must hence or i shall be deposed but i will reign to be revenged of them and therefore sweet friend 
take it patiently live where thou wilt i'll send thee gold enough and long thou shalt not stay or if thou dost i'll come to thee my love shall ne'er decline is all my hope turned to this he hell of grief oh, rend not my heart with thy too piercing words thou from this land i from myself am banished to go from hence grieves not poor gaveston uh, but to forsake you in whose gracious looks the blessedness of gaveston remains for nowhere else seeks he felicity and only this torments my wretched soul that whether i will or no thou must depart <laughs> be governor of ireland in my stead and there abide till fortune call thee home here take my picture and let me wear thine oh might i keep thee here as i do this happy were i but now most miserable tis something to be pitied of a king thou shalt not hence i'll hide thee gaveston i shall be found and then twill grieve me more kind words and mutual talk makes our grief greater therefore with dumb embracement let us part <sighs> Gaveston, I cannot leave thee thus. For every look, my lord, drops down a tear. Seeing as I must go, do not renew my sorrow. The time is little that thou hast to stay, and therefore give me leave to look my fill. But come, sweet friend, I'll bear thee on thy way the peers will frown i pass not for their anger come let's go that we might as well return as go enter the queen whither goes my lord for not on me french strumpet get thee gone on whom but on my husband should i fawn on mortimer with whom ungentle queen i say no more judge you the rest my lord in saying this thou wrong'st me gaveston is it not enough that thou corrupt'st my lord and art abhorred to his affections that thou must call mine honour thus in question i mean not so your grace must pardon me thou art too familiar with that mortimer and by thy means is gaveston exiled but i would wish thee reconcile the lords for thou shalt ne'er be reconciled to me your highness knows it lies not in my power away then touch me not come gaveston villain tis thou that robst me of my lord madame tis you that rob me of my lord speak not unto her let her droop and pine wherein my lord have i deserved these words witness the tears that isabella sheds witness this heart that sighing for thee breaks how dear my lord is to poor isabel and witness heaven how dear thou art to me there weep for till my gaveston be repealed assure thyself thou comest not in my sight exeunt edward and gaveston o oh, miserable and distressed queen would when i left sweet france and was embarked that charming circes walking on the waves had changed my shape 
or at the marriage day the cup of hymen had been full of poison or with those arms that twined about my neck i had been stifled and not lived to see the king my lord thus to abandon me like frantic juno will i fill the earth with ghastly murmur of my sighs and cries for never doted jove on ganymede as much as he on cursed gaveston but that will more exasperate his wrath i must entreat him i must speak him fair and be a means to call home gaveston and yet he'll ever dote on gaveston and so for ever i am miserable re-enter lancaster warwick pembroke mortimer senior and mortimer junior look where the sister of the king of france sits wringing of her hands and beats her breast the king i fear hath ill entreated her hard is the heart that injures such a saint i know tis long of gaveston she weeps why he is gone madam how fares your grace oh mortimer now breaks the king's hate forth and he confesseth that he loves me not cry quittance madam then and love not him no rather will i die a thousand deaths and yet i love in vain he'll ne'er love me fear ye not madam now his minion's gone his wanton humour will be quickly left oh never lancaster i am enjoined to sue unto you all for his repeal this wills my lord and this i must perform or else be banished from his highness presence for his repeal madam he comes not back unless the sea cast up his shipwrecked body and to behold so sweet a sight as that there's none here but would run his horse to death but madam would you have us call him home ay mortimer for till he be restored the angry king hath banished me the court and therefore as thou lovest and tenderest me be thou my advocate unto these peers what would you have me plead for gaveston plead for him he that will i am resolved and so am i my lord dissuade the queen o oh, lancaster let him dissuade the king for tis against my will he should return then speak not for him let the peasant go tis for myself i speak and not for him no speaking will prevail and therefore cease fair queen forbear to angle for the fish which being caught strikes him that takes it dead i mean that vile torpedo gaveston that now i hope floats on the irish seas sweet mortimer sit down by me a while and i will tell thee reasons of such weight as thou wilt soon subscribe to his repeal it is impossible but speak your mind then thus but none shall hear it but ourselves talks to mortimer junior apart my lords albeit the queen win mortimer will you be resolute and hold with me not i against my nephew fear not the queen's words cannot alter him no do but mark how earnestly she pleads and see how coldly his looks make denial she smiles now for my life his mind is changed i'll rather lose his friendship i than grant well of necessity it must be so my lords that i abhor base gaveston i hope your honours make no question and therefore though i plead for his repeal tis not for his sake but for our avail nay for the king's behoof fie mortimer dishonour not thyself can this be true twas good to banish him and is this true to call him home again such reasons make white black and dark night day my lord of lancaster mark the respect in no respect can contraries be true yet good my lord hear what he can allege all that he speaks is nothing we are resolved do you not wish that gaveston were dead i would he were why then my lord give me but leave to speak but nephew do not play the sophister this which i urge is of a burning zeal to mend the king and do our country good know you not gaveston hath store of gold which may in ireland purchase him such friends as he will front the mightiest of us all and whereas he shall live and be beloved tis hard for us to work his overthrow 
mark you but that my lord of lancaster but were he here detested as he is how easily might some base slave be suborned to greet his lordship with a poniard and none so much as blame the murderer but rather praise him for that brave attempt and in the chronicle enroll his name for purging of the realm of such a plague he saith true ay but how chance this was not done before because my lords it was not thought upon nay more when he shall know it lies in us to banish him and then to call him home to make him veil the top flag of his pride and fear to offend the meanest nobleman but how if he do not nephew then may we with some colour rise in arms for howsoe'er we have borne it out tis treason to be up against the king so we shall have the people on our side which for his father's sake lean to the king but cannot brook a night-grown mushrump such a one as my lord of cornwall is should bear us down of the nobility and when the commons and the nobles join tis not the king can buckler gaveston we'll pull him from the strongest hold he hath my lords if to perform this i be slack think me as base a groom as gaveston on that condition lancaster will grant and so will pembroke and i and i in this i count me highly gratified and mortimer will rest at your command and when this favour isabel forgets then let her live abandoned and forlorn but see in happy time my lord the king having brought the earl of cornwall on his way is new returned this news will glad him much yet not so much as me i love him more than he can gaveston would he loved me but half so much then were i treble blessed re-enter the king morning he's gone and for his absence thus i mourn did never sorrow go so near my heart as doth the want of my sweet gaveston and could my crown's revenue bring him back i would freely give it to his enemies and think i gained having bought so dear a friend hark how he harps upon his minion my heart is as an anvil unto sorrow which beats upon it like the cyclops hammers and with the noise turns up my giddy brain and makes me frantic for my canvaston oh, and some bloodless fury rose from hell and with my kingly sceptre struck me dead when i was forced to leave my Gaveston. diablo what passions call you these my gracious lord i come to bring you news that you have parleyed with your mortimer that gaveston my lord shall be repealed <sighs> repealed the news is too sweet to be true but will you love me if you find it so if it be so what will not edward do for gaveston but not for isabel for thee fair queen if thou lovest gaveston i'll hang a golden tongue about thy neck seeing thou hast pleaded with so good success no other jewels hang about my neck than these my lord nor let me have more wealth than i may fetch from this rich treasury oh how a kiss revives poor isabel once more receive my hand and let this be a second marriage twixt thyself and me and may it prove more happy than the first my gentle lord bespeak these nobles fair that wait attendance for a gracious look and on their knees salute your majesty courageous lancaster embrace thy king and as gross vapours perish by the sun even so let hatred with thy sovereign smile live thou with me as my companion this salutation overjoys my heart warwick shall be my chiefest counsellor 
these silver hairs will more adorn my court than gaudy silks or rich embroidery chide me sweet warwick if i go astray slay me my lord when i offend your grace in solemn triumphs and in public shows pembroke shall bear the sword before the king and with this sword pembroke will fight for you but wherefore walks young mortimer aside be thou commander of our royal fleet or if that lofty office like thee not i make thee here lord marshal of the realm my lord i'll marshal so your enemies as england shall be quiet and you safe and as for you lord mortimer of chirk whose great achievements in our foreign war deserves no commonplace nor mean reward be you the general of the levied troops that now are ready to assail the scots in this your grace hath highly honoured me for with my nature war doth best agree now is the king of england rich and strong having the love of his renowned peers ay isabel ne'er was my heart so light clerk of the crown direct our warrant forth for gaveston to ireland enter beaumont with warrant beaumont fly as fast as iris or jove's mercury it shall be done my gracious lord exit lord mortimer we leave you to your charge now let us in and feast it royally against our friend the earl of cornwall comes we'll have a general tilt and tournament and then his marriage shall be solemnized for what you not that i have made him sure unto our cousin the earl of gloucester's heir such news we hear my lord that day if not for him yet for my sake who in the triumph will be challenger spare for no cost we will requite your love in this or aught your highness shall command us thanks gentle warwick come let's in and revel exeunt all except the mortimers nephew i must to scotland thou stayest here leave now to oppose thyself against the king thou seest by nature he is mild and calm and seeing his mind so dotes on gaveston let him without controlment have his will the mightiest kings have had their minions great alexander loved hephaestion the conquering hercules for hylas wept and for patroclus stem achilles drooped and not kings only but the wisest men the roman tully loved octavius grave socrates wild alcibiades then let his grace whose youth is flexible and promiseth as much as we can wish freely enjoy that vain light-headed earl for riper years will wean him from such toys uncle his wanton humour grieves me not but this i scorn that one so basely born should by his sovereign's favour grow so pert and riot it with the treasure of the realm while soldiers mutiny for want of pay he wears a lord's revenue on his back and midas like he jets it in the court with base outlandish cullions at his heels whose proud fantastic liveries make such show as if that proteus god of shapes appeared i've not seen a dapper jack so brisk he wears a short italian hooded cloak larded with pearl and in his tuscan cap a jewel of more value than the crown whilst other walk below the king and he from out a window laugh at such as we and flout our train and jest at our attire uncle tis this that makes me impatient but nephew now you see the king is changed then so am i and live to do him service but whilst i have a sword a hand a heart i will not yield to any such upstart you know my mind. Come, uncle, let's away. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of Edward the Second. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain.
Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe. Act two. Scene one. A hall in Gloucester's house. Enter Spencer Junior and Baldock. Spencer, seeing that our lord the Earl of Gloucester is dead, which one of the nobles dost thou mean to serve? Not Mortimer, nor any of his side, because the king and he are enemies. Baldock, learn this of me. A factious lord shall hardly do himself good, much less us. But he that hath the favour of a king may with one word advance us while we live. The liberal Earl of Cornwall is the man on whose good fortune Spencer's hope depends. What? Mean you then to be his follower? No, his companion. For he loves me well, and would have once preferred me to the king. But he is banished. There is small hope of him. Aye, for a while. But Baldock, mark the end. A friend of mine told me in secrecy that he's repealed, and sent for back again, and even now a post came from the court with letters to our lady from the king. And as she read she smiled, which makes me think it is about her lover, Gaveston. It is like enough, for since he was exiled, she neither walks abroad nor comes in sight. But I had thought the match had been broke off, and that his banishment had changed her mind. Our lady's first love is not wavering. My life for thine she will have, Gaveston. Then hope I, by her means, to be preferred, having read unto her since she was a child. Then, Baldock, you must cast it off and learn to court it like a gentleman. It is not a black coat and a little band, a velvet-capped cloak faced before with serge, and, and smelling to a nosegay all the day, or holding of a napkin in your hand, or saying a long grace at a table's end or making low legs to a nobleman, or looking downward with your eyelids closed, and saying, Truly, and it may please your honour, can get you any favour with great men. You must be proud, bold, pleasant, resolute, and now and then stab, as occasion serves. Spencer, thou knowest I hate such formal toys, and use them but of mere hypocrisy. Mine old lord, while he lived, was so precise that he would take exceptions at my buttons, and being like pins' heads, blamed me for the bigness, which made me curate like in mine attire. Though inwardly licentious enough, and apt for any kind of villainy, I am none of these common patterns, I, that cannot speak with a proper accord. Living off this jesting, here my lady comes. Enter the king's niece. The grief for his exile was not so much as is the joy of his returning home. This letter came from my sweet Gaveston. What needs thou, love, thus to excuse thyself? I know thou couldst not come and visit me. Reads. I will not be long from thee, though I die. This argues the entire love of my lord. Reads. When I forsake thee, death sees on my heart. But rest thee here, where Gaveston shall sleep. Placing the letter in her bosom. Now, to the letter of my lord the king. He wills me to repair unto the court, and meet my Gaveston. Why do I stay, seeing that he talks of my marriage day? Who's there? Baldock, see that my coach be ready. I must hence. It shall be done, madam. And meet me at the park pale presently. Exit Baldock. Spencer, stay you and bear me company, for I have joyful news to tell thee of. My lord of Cornwall is a-coming over, and will be at the court as soon as we. I knew the king would have him home again. If all things sort out as I hope they will, thy service, Spencer, shall be thought upon. I humbly thank your ladyship. Come, lead the way. I long till I am there. Exeunt. Scene two. Before Tynemouth Castle. Enter the King, the Queen, Kent, Lancaster, Mortimer, Jr., Warwick, Pembroke, and attendants. The wind is good. I wonder why he stays. I fear me he is racked upon the sea. Look, Lancaster, how passionate he is. And still his mind runs on his minion. My lord. How now? What news? 
Is Gaveston arrived? Nothing but Gaveston? What means your grace? You have matters of more weight to think upon. The king of France sets foot in Normandy. <laughs> A trifle. We'll expel him when we please. But tell me, Mortimer, what's thy device against the stately triumph we decreed? A homely one, my lord, not worth the telling. Prithee, let me know it. But seeing you are so desirous, thus it is. A lofty cedar tree, fair flourishing, on whose top branches kingly eagles perch, and by the bark a canker creeps me up, and gets unto the highest bough of all, the motto, Eque Tandem. And what is yours, my lord of Lancaster? My lord, mine's more obscure than Mortimer's. Pliny reports there is a flying fish, which all the other fishes deadly hate, and therefore, being pursued, it takes the air. No sooner is it up, but there is a fowl that seetheth it. This fish, my lord, I bear, the motto this, Undique morphs est. Proud Mortimer, ungentle Lancaster, is this the love you bear your sovereign? Is this the fruit your reconcilement bears? Can you in words make show of amity, and in your shields display your rancorous minds? What call you this but private libelling against the Earl of Cornwall and my brother? Sweet husband, be content. They all love you. They love me not that hate my Gaveston. I am that cedar. Shake me not too much. And you the eagles. Saw ye ne'er so high. I have the jesses that will pull you down. And I tandem shall that canker cry unto the proudest peer of Brittany. Though thou compar'st him to a flying fish, and threatenest death, whether he rise or fall, tis not the hugest monster of the sea, nor foulest harpy, that shall swallow him. If in his absence thus he favours him, what will he do when as he shall be present? That shall we see. Look where his lordship comes. Enter Gaveston my caviston welcome to thine mouth welcome to thy friend thy absence made me droop and pine away for as the lovers of fair danae when she was locked up in a brazen tower desired her more and waxed outrageous so did it sure with me <laughs> and now thy sight is sweeter far than was thy parting hence bitter and irksome to my sobbing heart sweet lord and king your speech preventeth mine yet have i words left to express my joy the shepherd nipped with biting winter's rage frolics not more to see the painted spring than i do to behold your majesty oh, will none of you salute my gaveston salute him yes welcome lord chamberlain welcome is the good earl of cornwall welcome lord governor of the isle of man welcome master secretary brother do you hear them still will these earls and barons use me thus my lord i cannot brook these injuries aside ay me poor soul when these begin to jar <sighs> return it to their throats i'll be thy warrant oh, base leaden earls that glory in your birth Go sit at home, and eat your tenant's beef, And come not here to scoff at Gaveston, Whose mounting thoughts did never creep so low As to bestow a look on such as you. Yet I disdain not to do this for you. Draws his sword. Treason! Treason! Where's the traitor? Here! Here! Convey hence Gaveston! They'll murder him! The life of thee shall salve this foul disgrace. 
villain thy life unless i miss my name wounds gaveston ah oh, furious mortimer what hast thou done no more than i would answer were he slain exit gaveston with attendants yes more than thou canst answer though he live dear shall you both abide this riotous deed out of my presence come not near the court have i be barred the court with gaveston we'll hail him by the ears under the block look to your own heads his is sure enough look to your own crown if you back him thus warwick these words do ill beseem thy years nay all of them conspire to cross me thus but if i live i'll tread upon their heads that think with high looks thus to tread me down come edmund let's away and levy men tis war that must abate these barons pride exeunt king edward queen isabella and kent let's to our castles for the king is moved moved may he be and perish in his wrath cousin it is no dealing with him now he means to make us stoop by force of arms and therefore let us jointly here protest to prosecute that gaveston to the death by heaven the abject villain shall not live i'll have his blood or die in seeking it the like oath pembroke takes and so doth lancaster now send our heralds to defy the king and make the people swear to put him down enter a post let us from whence from scotland my lord why how now cousin how fares all our friends my uncle's taken prisoner by the scots we'll have him ransomed man be of good cheer they rate his ransom at five thousand pound who should defray the money but the king seeing he is taken prisoner in his wars i'll to the king do cousin and i'll bear thee company meantime my lord of pembroke and myself will to newcastle here and gather head about it then and we will follow you be resolute and full of secrecy i warrant you exeunt all but mortimer and lancaster cousin and if you will not ransom him i'll thunder such a peal into his ears as never subject did unto his king content i'll bear my part hola who's there enter guard i marry such a guard as this doth well lead on the way whither will your lordships whither else but to the king his highness is disposed to be alone why so he may but we will speak to him you may not in my lord may we not enter the king and kent how now what noise is this who have we here is to you going nay stay my lord i come to bring you news mine uncle's taken prisoner by the scots then ransom him twas in your wars you should ransom him and you shall ransom him or else what mortimer you will not threaten him quiet yourself you shall have the broad seal to gather for him thorough out the realm your minion gaveston hath taught you this my lord the family of the mortimers are not so poor but would they sell their land with levy men enough to anger you we never beg but use such prayers as these laying hold of his sword oh, shall i still be haunted thus nay now you are here alone i'll speak my mind and so will i and then my lord farewell the idle triumphs masks lascivious shows and prodigal gifts bestowed on gaveston have drawn thy treasure dry and made thee weak look for rebellion look to be deposed thy garrisons are beaten out of france and lame and poor lie groaning at the gates the wild onyel with swarms of irish kerns lives uncontrolled within the english pale unto the walls of york the scots made road and unresisted drave away rich spoils the haughty dane commands the narrow seas while in the harbour ride thy ships unrigged what foreign prince sends thee ambassadors who loves thee but a sort of flatterers thy gentle queen sole sister de valois complains that thou hast left her all forlorn thy court is naked being bereft of those that makes a king seem glorious to the world i mean the peers whom thou shouldst dearly love libels are cast against thee in the street 
ballads and rhymes made of thy overthrow the northern borderers seeing their houses burnt their wives and children slain run up and down cursing the name of thee and gaveston when wert thou in the field with banner spread but once and then thy soldiers marched like players with garish robes not armour and thyself bedaubed with gold rode laughing at the rest nodding and shaking of thy spangled crest where women's favours hung like labels down and thereof came it that the flaring scots to england's high disgrace have made this jig maids of england sore may you mourn for your lemons you have lost the paracas born with the heave and the ho but weaneth the king of england so soon do have one scotland with a rum below wigmore shall fly to set my uncle free and when tis gone our sword shall purchase more if ye be moved revenge it as you can look next to see us with our ensign spread exit with mortimer jr my swelling heart for very anger breaks how oft have i been baited by these peers and dare not be revenged for their power is great yet shall the crowing of these cockerels affright a lion edward unfold thy paws and let their lives blood slake thy fury's hunger if i be cruel and grow tyrannous now let them thank themselves and rue too late my lord i see your love to gaveston will be the ruin of the realm and you for now the wrathful nobles threaten wars and therefore brother banish him for ever art thou an enemy to my gaveston ay and it grieves me that i favoured him traitor be gone wine thou with mortimer so will i rather than with gaveston out of my sight and trouble me no more no marvel though thou scorn thy noble peers when i thy brother am rejected thus exit kent away <laughs> poor gaveston thou hast no friend but me do what they can we'll live in tynemouth here and so i walk with him about the walls what care i though the earls begirt us round here comes she that's cause of all these jars enter the queen with the king's niece two ladies gaveston baldock and spencer jr my lord tis thought the earls are up in arms Ay, and tis likewise thought you favour him thus do you still suspect me without cause sweet uncle speak more kindly to the queen my lord dissemble with her speak her fair pardon me sweet i forgot myself your pardon is quickly got of isabel oh, the younger mortimer is grown so brave that to my face he threatens civil wars why do you not commit him to the tower i dare not for the people love him well why then we'll have him privily made away would lancaster and he had both caroused a bowl of poison to each other's health but let them go and tell me what are these two of my father's servants whilst he live may it please your grace to entertain them now tell me where wast thou born what is thine arms my name is baldwick and my gentry i fetched from oxford not from heraldry <laughs> the fitter art thou bulldog for my turn wait on me and i'll see thou shalt not want i humbly thank your majesty knowest thou him baviston ay my lord his name is spencer he is well allied for my sake let him wait upon your grace scarce shall you find a man of more desert then spencer wait upon me for his sake i'll grace thee with a higher style ere long no greater titles happen to me 
than to be favoured of your majesty cousin this day shall be your marriage feast and gaveston think that i love thee well to wed thee to our niece the only heir unto the earl of gloucester late deceased i know my lord many will stomach me but i respect neither their love nor hate the headstrong barons shall not limit me he that i list to favour shall be great come let's away and when the marriage ends have at the rebels and their complices exeunt scene three near tynemouth castle enter kent lancaster mortimer jr warwick pembroke and others my lords of love to this our native land i come to join with you and leave the king and in your quarrel and the realm's behoof will be the first that shall adventure life i fear me you are set of policy to undermine us with a show of love he is your brother therefore we have cause to cast the worst and doubt of your revolt mine honour shall be hostage of my truth if that will not suffice farewell my lords stay edmund never was a plantagenet false of his word and therefore trust we thee but what's the reason you should leave him now i have informed the earl of lancaster and it sufficeth now my lords know this that gaveston is secretly arrived and here in time more frolics with the king let us with these our followers scale the walls and suddenly surprise them unawares i'll give the onset and i'll follow thee the tottered ensign of my ancestors which swept the desert shore of that dead sea whereof we got the name of mortimer will i advance upon these castle walls drums strike alarm raise them from their sport and ring aloud the knell of gaveston none be so hardy as to touch the king but neither spare you gaveston nor his friends exeunt scene four in tynemouth castle enter severally the king and spencer jr oh tell me spencer where is gaveston i fear me he is slain my gracious lord no here he comes now let them spoil and kill enter the queen the king's niece gaveston and nobles fly fly my lords the earls have got the hold take shipping and away to scarborough spencer and i will post away by land oh stay my lord they will not injure you i will not trust them gaveston away farewell my lord lady farewell farewell sweet uncle till we meet again farewell sweet gaveston and farewell niece no farewell to poor isabel thy queen yes yes for mortimer your lover's sake heavens can witness i love none but you exeunt all but queen isabella <sighs> from my embracements thus he breaks away oh that mine arms could close this isle about that i might pull him to me where i would or that these tears that drizzle from mine eyes had power to mollify his stony heart that when i had him we might never part enter lancaster warwick mortimer jr and others alarms within i wonder how he escaped who's this the queen i mortimer the miserable queen whose pining heart her inward sighs have blasted, and body with continual mourning wasted. These hands are tired with hailing of my lord from Gaveston, from wicked Gaveston, and all in vain, for when I speak him fair he turns away and smiles upon his minion. Cease to lament, and tell us where's the king? What would you with the king? Is him you seek? No, madam but that cursed gaveston far be it from the thought of lancaster to offer violence to his sovereign we would but rid the realm of gaveston tell us where he remains and he shall die he's gone by water unto scarborough pursue him quickly and he cannot scape the king hath left him and his train is small for slow no time sweet lancaster let's march 
how comes it that the king and he is parted that this your army going several ways might be of lesser force and with the power that he intendeth presently to raise be easily suppressed and therefore be gone here in the river rides a flemish hoy let's all aboard and follow him amain the wind that bears him hence will fill our sails come come aboard tis but an hour's sailing madam stay you within this castle here no mortimer i'll to my lord the king nay rather sail with us to scarborough you know the king is so suspicious as if he hear i have but talked with you mine honour will be called in question and therefore gentle mortimer be gone madam i cannot stay to answer you but think of mortimer as he deserves Axiant all but the queen so well hast thou deserved sweet mortimer as isabel could live with thee for ever in vain i look for love at edward's hand whose eyes are fixed on none but gaveston yet once more i'll importune him with prayers if he be strange and not regard my words my son and i will over into france and to the king my brother there complain how gaveston hath robbed me of his love but yet i hope my sorrows will have end and gaveston this blessed day be slain exit scene five the open country enter gaveston pursued yet lusty lords i have escaped your hands your threats your lorums and your hot pursuits and though divorced from king edward's eyes yet liveth pierce of gaveston unsurprised breathing in hope Malgrado all your beards that muster rebels thus against your king <sighs> to see his royal sovereign once again enter warwick lancaster pembroke mortimer jr soldiers james and other attendants of pembroke upon him soldiers take away his weapons thou proud disturber of thy country's peace corrupter of thy king cause of these broils base flatterer yield and were it not for shame shame and dishonour to a soldier's name upon my weapon's point here shouldst thou fall and welter in thy grave monster of men that like the english trumpet trained to arms and bloody wars so many valiant knights look for no other fortune wretch than death kind edward is not here to buckler thee Lancaster, why talkest thou to the slave? Go, soldiers, take him hence, for by my sword his head shall off. Gaveston, short warning shall serve thy term. It is our country's cause that here severely we will execute upon thy person. Hang him at a bow. My lord! Soldiers, have him away. But for thou wert the favourite of a king, thou shalt have so much honour at our hands i thank you all my lords then i perceive that heading is one and hanging is the other and death is all enter earl of arundel how now my lord of arundel my lords king edward greets you all by me arundel say your message his majesty hearing that you had taken gaveston entreat you by me yet but he may see him before he dies for why he says and sends you word he knows that die he shall and if you gratify his grace so far he will be mindful of the courtesy how now renowned edward how foul name revives poor gaveston no it needeth not arundel we will gratify the king in other matters he must pardon us in this soldiers away with him why my lord of warwick will not these delays beget my hopes i know it lords it is this life you aim at yet grant king edward this shalt thou appoint what we shall grant soldiers away with him thus we'll gratify the king will send his head by thee let him bestow his tears on that for that is all he gets of gaveston or else his senseless trunk not so my lord lest he bestow more cost in burying him than he hath ever earned my lords 
it is his majesty's request and in the honour of a king he swears he will but talk with him and send him back when can you tell arundel no we won't he that the care of realm remits and drives his nobles to these exigents for gaveston will if he sees him once violate any promise to possess him then if he will not trust his grace and keep my lords i will be pledged for his return it is honourable in thee to offer this but for we know thou art a noble gentleman we will not wrong thee so to make away a true man for a thief how meanest thou mortimer that is over base away base groom robber of king's renown question with thy companions and thy mates my lord mortimer and you my lords each one to gratify the king's request therein touching the sending of this gaveston because his majesty so earnestly desires to see the man before his death i will upon mine honour undertake to carry him and bring him back again provided this that you my lord of arundel will join me pembroke what wilt thou do cause yet more bloodshed is it not enough that we have taken him but must we now leave him on had i wist and let him go my lords i will not overwoo your honours but if you dare trust pembroke with the prisoner upon mine oath i will return him back my lord of lancaster what do you say in this why i say let him go on pembroke's word and you lord mortimer how say you my lord of warwick nay do your pleasure i know how to approve then give him me sweet sovereign yet i come to see thee ere i die aside yet not perhaps if warwick's wit and policy prevail my lord of pembroke we deliver him you return him on your honour sound away exeunt all except pembroke arundel gaveston james and other attendants of pembroke my lord you shall go with me my house is not far hence out of the way a little but our men shall go along we that have pretty wenches to our wives sir must not come so near and bolt their lips tis very kindly spoke my lord of pembroke your honour hath an adamant of power to draw a prince so my lord come hither james i do commit this gaveston to thee be thou this night his keeper in the morning we will discharge thee of thy charge be gone unhappy gaveston whither goest thou now exit pembroke with his men my lord will quickly be at cobham exeunt end of act two Act three of Edward the Second. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe. Act three, scene one. The open country. Enter Gaveston, mourning, James, and other attendants of Pembroke. O oh, treacherous Warwick, thus to wrong thy friend. I see it is your life these arms pursue. Weaponless must I fall and die in bands oh must this day be period of my life centre of all my bliss and ye be men speed to the king enter warwick and soldiers my lord of pembroke's men strive you no longer i will have that gaveston your lordship doth dishonour to yourself and wrong our lord your honourable friend no james it is my country's cause i follow go take the villain soldiers come away we'll make quick work commend me to your master my friend and tell him that i watched it well come let thy shadow parley with king edward treacherous earl shall i not see the king the king of heaven perhaps no other king away exeunt warwick and soldiers with gaveston come fellows it booted not for us to strive we will in haste go certify our lord 
Exeunt. Scene two. Near Boroughbridge in Yorkshire. Enter the King and Spencer Jr., Baldock and nobles of the King's side, and soldiers with drums and fifes. I long to hear an answer from the barons touching my friend, my dearest Gaveston. Oh, Spencer, not the riches of my realm can ransom him. Oh, he is marked to die. I know the malice of the younger Mortimer. Warwick, I know, is rough, and Lancaster inexorable and i shall never see my lovely peers my gaveston again the barons overbear me with their pride were i king edward england's sovereign son to the lovely eleanor of spain great edward longshanks issue would i bear these braves this rage and suffer uncontrolled these barons thus to beard me in my land in mine own realm my lord Pardon my speech. Did you retain your father's magnanimity? Did you regard the honour of your name? You would not suffer thus your majesty be counterbuffed of your nobility. Strike off their heads, and let them preach on poles. No doubt such lessons they will teach the rest, as by their preachments they will profit much, and learn obedience to their lawful king. Yea, gentle Spencer, we have been too mild, too kind to them, but now have drawn our sword, and if they send me not my Gaveston, we'll steal it on their crest, and pull their tops. This soft resolve becomes your majesty, not to be tied to their affection, as though your highness were a schoolboy steel and must be awed and governed like a child. Enter Spencer Senior, with his truncheon, and soldiers. Long live my sovereign, the noble Edward, in peace triumphant, fortunate in wars. Welcome, old man. Comest thou in Edward's aid? Then tell thy prince of whence and what thou art. Lo, with a band of bowmen and of pikes, Round bills and targeteers, four hundred strong, sworn to defend King Edward's royal right. I come in person to your majesty. Spencer, the father of Hugh Spencer there, bound to your highness everlastingly for favours done in him unto us all. Thy father, Spencer. True, and it like your grace, that pours in lieu of all your goodness shown his life, my lord, before your princely feet. Welcome ten thousand times, old man, again. Oh, Spencer, this love, this kindness to thy king, argues thy noble mind and disposition. Oh, Spencer, I here create the Earl of Wiltshire, and daily will enrich thee with our favour, that as the sunshine shall reflect o'er thee beside the more to manifest our love because we hear lord bruce doth sell his land and that the mortimers are in hand withal thou shalt have crowns of us to outbid the barons and spencer spare them not but lay it on soldiers a largesse and thrice welcome all my lord here comes the queen enter the queen Prince Edward, and Levune, a Frenchman. Madam, what news? News of dishonour, lord, and discontent. Our friend Levune, faithful and full of trust, informeth us, by letters and by words, that Lord Valois, our brother, King of France, because your highness hath been slack in homage, hath seized Normandy into his hands. These be the letters, this the messenger. Welcome, Levune. Tush, Sib, if this be all, Valois and I will soon be friends again. But to my Gaveston, shall I never see, never behold thee now? Madam, in this matter we will employ you and your little son. You shall go parley with the King of France. 
boy see you bear you bravely to the king and do your message with a majesty commit not my youth to things of more weight than fits a prince so young as i to bear and fear not lord and father heaven's great beams on atlas's shoulders shall not lie more safe than your charge committed to my trust ah boy this towardness makes thy mother fear thou art not marked to many days on earth madam we will that you with speed be shipped and this our son levune shall follow you with all the haste we can dispatch him hence choose of our lords to bear you company and go in peace leave us in wars at home unnatural wars where subjects brave their king god end them once my lord i take my leave to make my preparation for france exit with prince edward enter arundel what lord arundel dost thou come alone ye my good lord for gaveston is dead oh, traitors have they put my friend to death tell me arundel died he ere thou camest or didst thou see my friend to take his death neither my lord for as he was surprised be great with weapons and with enemies round i did your highness message to them all demanding him of them entreating rather and said upon the honour of my name that i would undertake to carry him on to your highness and to bring him back and tell me would the rebels deny me that proud recreants yea spencer traitors all i found them at the first inexorable the earl of warwick would not bide the hearing mortimer hardly pembroke and lancaster spake least and when they flatly had denied refusing to receive me pledge for him the earl of pembroke mildly thus bespake my lords because our sovereign sends for him and promised he shall be safe returned i will this undertake to have him hence and see him re-delivered to your hands well and how fortunes that he came not the earl of warwick seized him on his way for being delivered on to pembroke's men their lord rode home thinking his prisoner safe but ere he came warwick in ambush lay and bare him to his death and in a trench strake off his head and marched on to the camp a bloody part flatly against law of arms oh shall i speak or shall i sigh and die <laughs> my lord refer your vengeance to the sword upon these barons hearten up your men let them not unrevenged murder your friends advance your standard edward in the field and march to fire them from their starting holes king edward kneeling by earth the common mother of us all by heaven and all the moving orbs thereof by this right hand and by my father's sword and all the honours longing to my crown i will have heads and lives for him as many as i have manors castles towns and towers treacherous warwick traitorous mortimer if i be england's king in lakes of gore your headless trunks your bodies will i trail that you may drink your fill and quaff in blood and stain my royal standard with the same that so my bloody colours may suggest remembrance of revenge immortally on your accursed traitorous progeny you villains that have slain my gaviston and in this place of honour and of trust spencer sweet spencer i adopt thee here and merely of our love do we create thee earl of gloucester 
and lord chamberlain despite of times despite of enemies my lord here's a messenger from the barons desires access unto your majesty admit him near enter the herald with his coat of arms long live king edward england's lawful lord so wish not they i wis that sent thee hither thou comest from mortimer and his complices a rancour rout of rebels never was well say thy message the barons up in arms by me salute your highness with long life and happiness and bid me say as plainer to your grace that if without effusion of blood you will this grief have ease and remedy that from your princely person you remove this spencer as a putrefying branch that deads the royal vine whose golden leaves impale your princely head your diadem whose brightness such pernicious upstarts dim say they and lovingly advise your grace to cherish virtue and nobility and have old servitors in high esteem and shake off smooth dissembling flatterers this granted they their honours and their lives are to your highness vowed and consecrate oh, traitors will they still display their pride away tarry no answer but be gone rebels will they appoint their sovereign his sports his pleasures and his company yet ere thou go see how i do divorce spencer from me hmm. now get thee to thy lords and tell them i will come to chastise them for murdering gaveston hide thee get thee gone edward with fire and sword follows at thy heels exit herald my lord perceive you how these rebels swell soldiers good hearts defend your sovereign's right for now even now we march to make them stoop away exeunt alarms excursions a great fight and a retreat sounded within scene three the battlefield boroughbridge enter the king spencer senior spencer junior and noblemen of the king's side why do we sound retreat upon them lords this day i shall pour vengeance with my sword on those proud rebels that are up in arms and do confront and countermand their king i doubt it not my lord right will prevail tis not amiss my liege for either part to breathe a while our men with sweat and dust all choked well near begin to faint for heat and this retire refresheth horse and barn here come the rebels enter mortimer jr lancaster warwick pembroke and others look lancaster yonder is edward among his flatterers and there let him be till he pay dearly for their company and shall or warwick's sword shall smite in vain what rebels do you shrink and sound retreat no edward no thy flatterers faint and fly they'd best be time to forsake thee and their trains for they betray thee traitors as they are traitor on thy face rebellious lancaster away base upstart braves thou nobles thus a noble attempt an honourable deed is it not trow ye to assemble aid and levy arms against your lawful king for which ere long their heads shall satisfy to appease the wrath of their offended king then edward thou wilt fight it to the last and rather bathe thy sword in subjects blood than banish that pernicious company ay traitors all rather than thus be braved make england's civil towns huge heaps of stones and ploughs to go about our palace gates a desperate and unnatural resolution alarum to the fight st george for england and the baron's right oh, st george for england and king edward's right alarums 
Exeunt the two parties severally. Enter the king and his followers, with the barons and Kent, captives. Now, lusty lords, now, not by chance of war, but justice of the quarrel and the cause, veiled is your pride. Methinks you hang the heads, but we'll advance them, traitors. Now tis time to be avenged on you for all your braves, and for the murder of my dearest friend to whom right well you knew our soul was knit good pierce of gaveston my sweet favourite ah rebels recreants you made him away brother in regard of thee and of thy land did they remove that flatterer from thy throne so sir you have spoke away avoid our presence exit kent accursed wretches was in regard of us when we had sent our messenger to request he might be spared to come to speak with us and pembroke undertook for his return that thou proud warwick watched the prisoner poor peers and headed him against law of arms oh, for which thy head shall overlook the rest as much as thou in rage outwentst the rest tyrant i scorn thy threats and menaces tis but temporal that thou canst inflict the worst is death and better die to live than live in infamy under such a king away with them my lord of winchester these lusty leaders warwick and lancaster i charge you roundly off with both their heads away farewell vain world sweet mormer farewell england unkind to thy nobility groan for this grief behold how thou art maimed go take that haughty mortimer to the tower there see him safe bestowed and for the rest do speedy execution on them all be gone what mortimer can ragged stony walls immure thy virtue that aspires to heaven no edward england's scourge it may not be mortimer's hope surmounts his fortune far the captive barons are led off sound drums and trumpets march with me my friends edward this day hath crowned him king anew exeunt all except spencer jr levune and baldock levune the trust that we repose in thee begets the quiet of king edward's land therefore be gone in haste and with advice bestow that treasure on the lords of france that therewith all enchanted, like the guard that suffered Jove to pass in showers of gold to deny, all aid may be denied to Isabel the Queen, that now in France makes friends to cross the seas with her young son and step into his father's regiment. That's it these barons and the subtle queen long levelled at. Yeah, but Levion, thou seest, these barons laid their heads on blocks together. What they intend the hangman frustrates clean have you no doubts my lords i'll clap so close among the lords of france with england's gold that isabel shall make her plaints in vain and france shall be obdurate with her tears then make for france amain levune away proclaim king edward's wars and victories Accent. end of act three Act Four of Edward the Second. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe. Act Four, Scene One. Near the Tower of London. Enter Kent. Fair blows the wind for France. Blow, gentle gale, till Edmund be arrived for England's good. Nature, yield to my country's cause in this. A brother, no, a butcher of thy friends. Proud Edward, dost thou banish me thy presence? But I'll to France, and cheer the wronged queen, And certify what Edward's looseness is. 
unnatural king, to slaughter noble men and cherish flatterers. Mortimer, I stay thy sweet escape. Stand gracious, gloomy knight, to his device. Enter Mortimer, Jr., disguised. Holla, who walketh there? Is't you, my lord? Mortimer, tis I. But hath thy potion wrought so happily? It hath, my lord. The warders, all asleep, I thank them, gave me leave to pass in peace. But hath your grace got shipping unto France? Fear it not. Exeunt. Scene two. Paris. Enter the Queen and Prince Edward. Ah, boy, our friends do fail us all in France. The lords are cruel and the king unkind. What shall we do? Madam, return to England, and please my father well, and then a fig for my uncle's friendship here in France. I warrant you, I'll win his highness quickly. I loves me better than a thousand Spencers. Oh, boy, thou art deceived, at least in this, to think that we can yet be tuned together. No, no, we jar too far. Unkind Valois, unhappy Isabel, when France rejects, whither, oh, whither dost thou bend thy steps? Enter Sir John of Aino. Madame, what cheer? Ah, good Sir John of Aino, never so cheerless, nor so far distressed. I hear, sweet lady, of the king's unkindness. But droop not, madame, noble minds contempt despair. Will your grace with me to Aino, and there stay time's advantage with your son? How say you, my lord? Will you go with your friends, and share of all our fortunes equally? So pleaseth the queen, my mother, me it likes. The king of England, nor the court of France, shall have me for my gracious mother's side, till I be strong enough to break a staff, and then the proudest Spencer's heads. Well said, my lord. O oh, my sweet heart, how do I moan thy wrongs, yet triumph in the hope of thee, my joy! O oh, sweet Sir John, even to the utmost verge of Europe, or to the shore of Tanais, will we with thee to Aino, so we will. The Marquis is a noble gentleman, his grace, I dare presume, will welcome me. But who are these? Enter Kent and Mortimer, Jr. Madam, long may you live much happier than your friends in England do. Lord Edmund, and Lord Mortimer, alive! Oh, welcome to France! The news was here, my lord, that you were dead, or very near your death. Lady, the last was truest of the twain, but Mortimer, reserved for better hap, hath shaken off the thraldom of the tower, and lives to advance your standard, good my lord. How mean you? And the king, my father, lives. No, my lord Mortimer, not I, I trow. Not, son? Why not? I would it were no worse. But, gentle lords, friendless we are in France. Monsieur Le Grand, a noble friend of yours, told us at our arrival all the news. How hard the nobles, how unkind the king hath showed himself. But, madam, right makes room where weapons want. And though a many friends are made away, as Warwick, Lancaster, and others of our party and faction, yet we have friends, assure your grace, in England, would cast up caps and clap their hands for joy to see us there appointed for our foes. Would all were well, and Edward well reclaimed, for England's honour, peace, and quietness. But by the sword, my lord, it must be deserved. The king will ne'er forsake his flatterers. My lords of England, sith the ungentle king of France refuseth to give aid of arms to this distressed queen, his sister here, Go you with her to Aino. Doubt ye not, we will find comfort, money, men, and friends ere long, to bid the English king a base. How say, young prince, what think you of the match? I think King Edward will outrun us all. Nay, son, not so, and you must not discourage your friends that are so forward in your aid. Sir John of Haino, pardon us, I pray. These comforts that you give our woeful queen bind us in kindness all at your command. Yea, gentle brother, and the God of heaven prosper your happy motion, good Sir John. This noble gentleman, forward in arms, was born, I see, to be our anchor-hold. Sir John of Aino, B, 
be it thy renown that england's queen and nobles in distress have been by thee restored and comforted madam along and you my lords with me that england's peers may eno's welcome see exeunt scene three the royal palace london enter the king arundel the spencers and others thus after many threats of wrathful war triumpheth england's edward with his friends and triumph edward with his friends uncontrolled my lord of gloucester do you hear the news what news my lord why man they say there is great execution done through the realm my lord of arundel you have the note have you not from the lieutenant of the tower my lord i pray let us see it what have we there read it spencer hands it to spencer junior who reads the names why so they barked apace a month ago now on my life they'll neither bark nor bite now sirs the news from france gloucester i trow the lords of france love england's gold so well as isabella gets no aid from thence <laughs> what now remains have you proclaimed my lord reward for them can bring in mortimer my lord we have and if he be in england i will be had ere long i doubt it not if dost thou say spencer as true as death he is in england's ground our portmasters are not so careless of their king's command enter a post how now what's news with thee from whence come these letters my lord and tidings forth of france to you my lord of gloucester from lavoon gives letters to spencer junior <clears throat> my duty to your honour premised etc i have according to instructions in that behalf dealt with the king of france his lords and effected that the queen all discontented and discomforted is gone whither if you ask with sir john of Hainault, brother to the marquis into flanders with them are gone lord edmund and the lord mortimer having in their company divers of your nation and as constant report goeth they intend to give king edward battle in england sooner than he can look for them this is all the news of import your honours in all service lavoon our villains has that mortimer escaped with him is edmund gone associate and will sir john of eno lead the round welcome a god's name madam and your son england shall welcome you and all your rout gallop apace bright phoebus through the sky and dusky night in rusty iron car between you both shorten the time i pray that i may see that most desired day when we may meet these traitors in the field oh nothing grieves me but my little boy is thus misled to countenance their ills come friends to bristol there to make us strong and winds as equal be to bring them in as you injurious were to bear them forth exeunt scene four near harwich enter the queen prince edward kent mortimer junior and sir john of aino now lords our loving friends and countrymen welcome to england all with prosperous winds our kindest friends in belgia we have left to cope with friends at home a heavy case when force to force is knit and sword and glaive in civil broils makes kin and countrymen slaughter themselves in others 
and their sides with their own weapons gored. But what's the help? Misgoverned kings are cause of all this rack. And Edward, thou art one among them all, whose looseness hath betrayed thy land to spoil, and made the channels overflow with blood of thine own people. Patron shouldst thou be, but thou— Nay, madam, if you be a warrior, you must not grow so passionate in speeches. Lords, sith that we are by sufferance of heaven arrived, and armed in this prince's right, here for our country's cause swear we to him all homage, fealty, and forwardness, and for the open wrongs and injuries Edward hath done to us, his queen, and land, we come in arms to wreck it with the swords, that England's queen in peace may repossess her dignities and honours, and withal we may remove these flatterers from the king that havocs England's wealth and treasury. Sound trumpets, my lord, and forward let us march. Edward will think we come to flatter him. I would he never had been flattered more. Exeunt. Scene five. Near Bristol. Enter the king, Baldock, and Spencer, Jr., flying about the stage. Fly, fly, my lord. The queen is overstrong. Her friends do multiply, and yours do fail. Shape we our course to Ireland, there to breathe. What? Was I born to fly and run away, and leave the Mortimers, conquerors, behind? Give me my horse, and let's reinforce our troops, and in this bed of honours die with fame. Oh, no, my lord, this princely resolution feeds not the time. Away we are pursued. Exeunt. Enter Kent alone, with a sword and target. This way he fled, but I am come too late. Edward, alas, my heart relents for thee. Proud traitor Mortimer, why dost thou chase thy lawful king, thy sovereign, with thy sword? Vile wretch! And why hast thou, of all unkind, borne arms against thy brother and thy king? Rain showers of vengeance on my cursed head, thou God, to whom in justice it belongs to punish this unnatural revolt. Edward, this Mortimer aims at thy life. O oh, fly him, then! But, Edmund, calm this rage, dissemble, or thou diest, for Mortimer and Isabel do kiss while they conspire, and yet she bears a face of love, forsooth. Fie on that love that hatcheth death and hate! Edmund, away! Bristow to Longshank's blood is false, be not found single for suspect. Proud Mortimer pries near into thy walks. Enter the Queen, Prince Edward, Mortimer, Jr., and Sir John of Aino. Successful battles gives the God of Kings to them that fight in right and fear his wrath. Since then successfully we have prevailed, thanks be heaven's great architect and you. Ere farther we proceed, my noble lords, we here create our well-beloved son, of love and care unto his royal person, Lord Warden of all the realm, and sith the fates have made his father so infortunate, deal you, my lords, in this— my loving lords, as to your wisdom's fittest seems in all. Madam, without offence, if I may ask, how will you deal with Edward in his fall? Tell me, good uncle, what Edward do you mean? Nephew, your father, I dare not call him king. My lord of Kent, what means these questions? Tis not in her controlment, nor in ours, but as the realm and parliament shall please. So shall your brother be disposed of. Aside to the queen. I like not this relenting mood in Edmund. Madam, tis good to look to him betimes. My lord, the mayor of Bristow knows our mind. Yes, madam, and they scape not easily that fled the field. Baldock is with the king. A goodly chancellor is not he, my lord. So are the Spencers, the father and the son. This, Edward, is the ruin of the realm. Enter Rysap Howell and the mayor of Bristow, with Spencer Sr., prisoner, and attendants. God save Queen Isabel and her princely son. Madam, the mayor and citizens of Bristow, in the sign of love and duty to this presence, present by me this traitor to the state, Spencer, the father to that wanton Spencer, that, like the lawless Catiline of Rome, revelled in England's wealth and treasury. We thank you all. Your loving care in this deserveth princely favours and rewards. 
but where's the king and the other spencer fled spencer the son created earl of gloucester is with that smooth-tongued scowler baldock gone and shipped but late for ireland with the king aside some whirlwind fetch them back or sink them all they shall be started thence i doubt it not shall i not see the king my father yet aside unhappy is edward chased from england's bounds madame what resteth why stand you in a muse i rue my lord's ill fortune but alas care of my country called me to this war madam have done with care and sad complaint your king hath wronged your country and himself and we must seek to right it as we may meanwhile have hence this rebel to the block your lordship cannot privilege your head the rebel is he that fights against his prince so fought not they that fought in edward's right take him away he prates exeunt attendants with spencer senior you recep howell shall do good service to her majesty being of countenance in your country here to follow these rebellious runagates we in meanwhile madam must take advice how baldock spencer and their accomplices may in their fall be followed to their end exeunt scene six the abbey of neath glamorganshire enter the abbot monks the king spencer jr and baldock the latter three disguised have you no doubt my lord have you no fear as silent and as careful will we be to keep your royal person safe with us free from suspect and fell invasion of such as have your majesty in chase yourself and those your chosen company as danger of this stormy time requires oh father thy face should harbour no deceit oh hadst thou ever been a king thy heart pierced deeply with sense of my distress could not but take compassion of my state stately and proud in riches and in train whilom i was powerful and full of pomp but what is he whom rule and empery have not in life or death made miserable come spencer come bulldog come sit down by me make trial now of that philosophy that in our famous nurseries of arts thou suckedst from plato and from aristotle father this life contemplative is heaven oh that i might this life in quiet lead but we alas are chaste and you my friends your lives and my dishonour they pursue yet gentle monks for treasure gold nor fee do you betray us and our company your grace may sit secure if none but we do what of your abode not one alive but shrewdly i suspect a gloomy fellow in a mead below and gave a long look after us my lord and all the land i know is up in arms arms that pursue our lives with deadly hate we were embarked for ireland raged we with awkward winds and sore tempests driven to fall on shore and here to pine in fear of mortimer and his confederates mortimer who talks of mortimer who wounds me with the name of mortimer that bloody man good father on thy lap lay i this head laden with mickle care oh might i never open these eyes again never again lift up this drooping head oh never more lift up this dying heart look up my lord bulldog this drowsiness betides no good here even we are betrayed enter with welsh hooks rysap howell a mower and lester upon my life these be the men ye seek fellow enough my lord i pray be short a fair commission warrants what we do the queen's commission urged by mortimer 
What cannot gallant Mortimer with the Queen? Alas, see where he sits, and hopes unseen to escape the hand that seeks to reave his life. Too true it is, quem dies vedit venin superbum, hum dies vedit fugiens jacentum. But, Lester, leave to grow so passionate. Spencer and Baldock, by no other names, I arrest you of high treason here. Stand not on titles, but obey the arrest. Tis in the name of Isabel the Queen. My lord, why droop you thus? Oh, day, the last of all my bliss on earth, centre of all misfortune. Oh, my stars, why do you lower unkindly on a king? Oh, comes Lester, then, in Isabella's name, to take my life, my company from me? Here, man, rip up this panting breast of mine, and take my heart in rescue of my friends. Away with them. It may become thee yet to let us take our farewell of his grace. My heart with pity earns to see this sight, a king to bear these words and proud commands. Spencer, oh, sweet Spencer, thus then must we part. We must, my lord. So will the angry heavens. Nay, so will hell and cruel Mortimer. The gentle heavens have not to do in this. My lord, it is in vain to grieve us tall. Here, humbly of your grace, we take our leaves. Our lots are cast. I fear me, so is thine. In heaven we may. In earth never shall we meet. And Lester, say what shall become of us. Your Majesty must go to Killingworth. Must. Tis somewhat hard when kings must go. Here is a litter ready for your grace, that waits your pleasure, and the day grows old. As good be gone, as stay and be benighted. A litter hast thou? Lay me in a hearse, and to the gates of hell convey me hence. Let Pluto's bells ring out my fatal knell, and hags howl for my death at Caron's shore. For friends hath Edward none but these and these, and these must die under a tyrant's sword. My lord, be going. Care not for these, for we shall see them shorter by the heads. Well, that shall be, shall be. Part we must. Sweet Spencer, gentle Baldock, part we must. Hence feigned weeds, unfeigned are my woes. Throws off his disguise. Father, farewell. Lester, thou stayst for me, and go I must. Life farewell with my friends. Exeunt the king and Lester. Oh, is he gone? Is noble Edward gone, parted from hence, never to see us more? Rent sphere of heaven, and fire forsake thy orb, earth melt to air. Gone is my sovereign. Gone. Gone. Alas, never to make return. Spencer, I see our souls are fleet at hands. We are deprived the sunshine of our life. Make for a new life, man. Throw up thy eyes and heart and hand to heaven's immortal throne. Pay nature's debt with cheerful countenance. Reduce we all our lessons unto this, To die, sweet Spencer. Therefore leave we all, Spencer, All leave to die, and rise to fall. Come, come, keep these preachments Till you come to the place appointed. You, and such as you are, Have made wise work in England. Were your lordships away? Your worship, I trust, will remember me. Remember thee, fellow. What else? Follow me to the town. Exeunt. 
End of Act Four. Act Five of Edward the Second. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe. Act Five, Scene One. Kenilworth Castle. Enter the King, Leicester, the Bishop of Winchester, and Trussell. Be patient, good my lord, cease to lament. Imagine Killingworth Castle were your court, and that you lay for pleasure here a space, not of compulsion or necessity. Leicester, if gentle words might comfort me, thy speeches long ago had eased my sorrows, for kind and loving hast thou always been. The griefs of private men are soon allayed but not of kings the forest deer being struck runs to an herb that closeth up the wounds but when the imperial lion's flesh is gored he rends and tears it with his wrathful paw and highly scorning that the lowly earth should drink his blood mounts up into the air and so it fares with me whose dauntless mind the ambitious mortimer would seek to curb and that unnatural queen false isabel that thus hath pent and mewed me in a prison for such outrageous passions cloy my soul as with the wings of rancour and disdain full often am i soaring up to heaven to plain me to the gods against them both but when i call to mind i am a king methinks i should revenge me of the wrongs that mortimer and isabel have done but what are kings when regiment is gone but perfect shadows in a sunshine day my nobles rule i bear the name of king i wear the crown but am controlled by them by mortimer and my unconstant queen who spots my nuptial bed with infamy whilst i am lodged within this cave of care where sorrow at my elbow still attends to company my heart with sad laments that bleeds within me for this strange exchange but tell me must i now resign my crown to make usurping mortimer a king your grace mistakes it is for england's good and princely edward's right we crave the crown no tis for mortimer not edward's head for he's a lamb encompassed by wolves which in a moment will abridge his life but if proud mortimer do wear this crown heavens turn it to a blaze of quenchless fire or like the snaky wreath of tisiphon engirds the temples of his hateful head so shall not england's vine be perished but edward's name survives though edward dies my lord why waste you thus the time away they stay your answer will you yield your crown ah leicester weigh how hardly i can brook to lose my crown and kingdom without cause to give ambitious mortimer my right that like a mountain overwhelms my bliss in which extreme my mind here murthered is oh but what the heavens appoint i must obey here take my crown the life of edward too taking off the crown two kings in england cannot reign at once 
but stay a while let me be king till night that i may gaze upon this glittering crown so shall my eyes receive their last content my head the latest honour due to it and jointly both yield up their wished right oh continue ever thou celestial sun let never silent night possess this clime stand still you watches of the element all times and seasons rest you at a stay that edward may be still fair england's king oh, but day's bright beams doth vanish fast away and needs i must resign my wished crown inhuman creatures nursed with tiger's milk why gape you for your sovereign's overthrow my diadem i mean and guiltless life see monsters see i'll wear my crown again he puts on the crown what fear you not the fury of your king <laughs> but hapless edward thou art fondly led they pass not for thy frowns as late they did but seeks to make a new elected king which fills my mind with strange despairing thoughts which thoughts are martyred with endless torments and in this torment comfort find i none but that i feel the crown upon my head and therefore let me wear it yet a while my lord the parliament must have present news and therefore say will you resign or no i'll not resign but whilst i live i'll live traitors be gone and join you with mortimer elect conspire install do what you will their blood and yours shall seal these treacheries this answer will return and so farewell call them again my lord and speak them fair for if they go the prince shall lose his rights <laughs> call thou them back i have no power to speak my lord the king is willing to resign if he be not let him choose oh would i might but heavens and earth conspire to make me miserable here receive my crown <sighs> receive it no these innocent hands of mine shall not be guilty of so foul a crime he of you all that most desires my blood and will be called the murderer of a king take it what are you moved pity you me then send for unrelenting mortimer and isabel whose eyes being turned to steel will sooner sparkle fire than shed a tear Oh, yet stay for rather than i will look on them here here gives the crown now sweet god of heaven make me despise this transitory pomp and sit for i enthrone i said in heaven come death and with thy fingers close my eyes or if i live let me forget myself my lord call me not lord away out of my sight ah pardon me grief makes me lunatic let not that mortimer protect my son 
more safety is there in a tiger's jaws than his embracements bear this to the queen wet with my tears and dried again with sighs gives a handkerchief if with the sight thereof she be not moved return it back and dip it in my blood commend me to my son and bid him rule better than i yet how have i transgressed unless it be with too much clemency and thus most humbly do we take our leave exeunt the bishop of winchester and trussell farewell i know the next news that they bring will be my death and welcome shall it be to wretched men death is felicity enter barclay who gives a paper to leicester another post what news brings he such news as i expect come barclay come and tell thy message to my naked breast my lord think not a thought so villainous can harbour in a man of noble birth to do your highness service and devoir and save you from your foes barclay would die my lord the counsel of the queen commands that i resign my charge and who must keep me now must you my lord i my most gracious lord so tis decreed king edward taking the paper by mortimer whose name is written here well may i rent his name that rends my heart oh, this poor revenge hath something eased my mind so may his limbs be torn as is this paper hear me immortal jove and grant it too your grace must hence with me to barclay straight whither you will all places are alike and every earth is fit for burial favour him my lord as much as lieth in you even so betide my soul as i use him <laughs> mine enemy hath pitied my estate and that's the cause that i am now removed and thinks your grace that barclay will be cruel i know not but of this i am assured that death ends all and i can die but once leicester farewell not yet my lord i'll bear you on your way exeunt scene two the royal palace london enter the queen and mortimer jr fair isabel now have we our desire the proud corrupters of the light-brained king have done their homage to the lofty gallows and he himself lies in captivity be ruled by me and we will rule the realm in any case take heed of childish fear for now we hold an old wolf by the ears that if he slip will seize upon us both and gripe the sorer being gripped himself think therefore madam that imports us much to erect your son with all the speed we may and that i be protector over him for our behoof will bear the greater sway when as a king's name shall be under writ sweet mortimer the life of isabel be thou persuaded that i love thee well and therefore so the prince my son be safe whom i esteem as dear as these mine eyes conclude against his father what thou wilt and I myself will willingly subscribe. First would I hear news he were deposed, and then let me alone to handle him. Enter messenger. Letters from whence? From Killingworth, my lord. How fares my lord the king? In health, madam, but full of pensiveness. Alas, poor soul, would I could ease his grief. Enter the bishop of Winchester with the crown. Thanks, gentle Winchester. To the messenger. Sirrah, be gone! Exit messenger. The king hath willingly resigned his crown. Oh, happy news! Send for the prince, my son. Father, 
ere this letter was sealed lord berkeley came so that he now is gone from killingworth and we have heard that edmund laid a plot to set his brother free no more but so the lord of berkeley is so pitiful as leicester that had charge of him before then let some other be his guardian let me alone here is the privy seal exit to the bishop of winchester who's there call hither gurney and mathrevis to attendants within to dash the heavy-headed edmund's drift berkeley shall be discharged the king removed and none but we shall know where he lieth but mortimer as long as he survives what safety rests for us or for my son speak shall he presently be dispatched and die i would he were so it were not by my means enter matrevis and gurney enough matrevis write a letter presently unto the lord of berkeley from ourself that he resign the king to thee and gurney and when tis done we will subscribe our name it shall be done my lord writes gurney my lord as thou intendest to rise by mortimer who now makes fortune's wheel turn as he please seek all the means thou canst to make him droop and neither give him kind word nor good look i warrant you my lord and this above the rest because we hear that edmund casts to work his liberty remove him still from place to place by night till at the last he come to killingworth and then from thence to berkeley back again and by the way to make him threat of the more speak cursedly to him and in any case let no man confront him if he chance to weep but amplify his grief with bitter words fear not my lord we'll do as you command so now away post thither words amain whither goes this letter to my lord the king commend me humbly to his majesty and tell him that I labour all in vain to ease his grief and work his liberty, and bear him this as witness of my love. Gives a ring. I will, madam. Exit with Gurney. Finally dissembled. Do so still, sweet queen. Here comes the young prince with the Earl of Kent. Something he whispers in his childish ears. If he have such access unto the prince, our plots and stratagems will soon be dashed use edmund friendly as if all were well enter prince edward and kent talking with him how fares my honourable lord of kent in health sweet mortimer how fares your grace well if my lord your brother were enlarged i hear of late he hath deposed himself the more my grief aside ah they do dissemble sweet son come hither i must talk with thee Thou being his uncle, and the next of blood, do not look to be protector over the prince. Not I, my lord. Who should protect the son but she that gave him life? I mean the queen. Mother, persuade me not to wear the crown. Let him be king. I am too young to reign. But be content, seeing it is highness' pleasure. Let me but see him first, and then I will. I do, sweet nephew. Brother, you know it is impossible. Why, is he dead? No, God forbid. I would those words proceeded from your heart. Inconstant Edmund, dost thou favour him, that was a cause of his imprisonment? The more cause have I now to make amends. I tell thee, tis not meet that one so false should come about the person of a prince. My lord, he hath betrayed the king his brother, and therefore trust him not. But he repents and sorrows for it now. Come, son, and go with this gentle lord and me. With you I will, but not with Mortimer. Why, youngling? Stainst thou so of Mortimer? Then I will carry thee by force away. Help me, Uncle Kent. Mortimer will wrong me. Brother Edmund, strive not. We are his friends. Isabel is nearer than the Earl of Kent. Sister, Edward is my charge. Redeem him. Edward is my son, and I will keep him. Mortimer shall know that he hath wronged me. Hence will I haste to Killingworth Castle, and rescue aged Edward from his foes, to be revenged on Mortimer and thee. Exeunt on one side the Queen, Prince Edward, and Mortimer, Jr. On the other, Kent. Scene three, Near Kenilworth Castle. Enter Matrevis and Gurney and soldiers, with the King. My lord, be not pensive. We are your friends. Men are ordained to live in misery therefore come dalliance dangereth our lives 
friends whither must unhappy edward go will hateful mortimer appoint no rest must i be vexed like the nightly bird whose sight is loathsome to all winged fowls when will the fury of his mind assuage when will his heart be satisfied with blood if mine will serve unbowel straight this breast and give my heart to isabel and him it is the chiefest mark they level at not so my liege the queen hath given this charge to keep your grace in safety your passions make your dullers to increase this usage makes my misery increase but can my air of life continue long when all my senses are annoyed with stench within a dungeon england's king is kept where i am starved for want of sustenance my daily diet is heart-breaking sobs that almost rent the closet of my heart thus lives old edward not relieved by any and so must die though pitied by many <sighs> water gentle friends to cool my thirst and clear my body from foul excrements here's channel water as our charge is given sit down for we'll be barbers to your grace <laughs> oh, traitors away what will you murder me or choke your sovereign with puddle water no but wash your face and shave away your beard lest you be known and so be rescued why strive you thus your labour is in vain the wren may strive against the lion's strength but all in vain so vainly do i strive to seek for mercy at a tyrant's hand they wash him with puddle water and shave his beard away immortal powers that knows the painful cares that waits upon my poor distressed soul o oh, level all your looks upon these daring men that wrongs their liege and sovereign england's king o oh, gaveston it is for thee that i am wronged for me both thou and both the spencers died and for your sakes a thousand wrongs i'll take the spencers ghost wherever they remain wish well to me then tush for them i'll die twixt theirs and yours shall be no enmity come come away now put the torches out we'll enter in by darkness to killingworth enter kent how now who comes there guard the king sure it is the earl of kent oh gentle brother help to rescue me keep them asunder thrust in the king soldiers let me but talk to him one word lay hands upon the earl for this assault lay down your weapons traitors yield the king edmund yield thou thyself or thou shalt die base villains wherefore do you gripe me thus bind him and so convey him to the court where is the court but here here is the king and i will visit him why stay you me the court is where Lord Mortimer remains. Thither shall your honour go, and so farewell. Exeunt Matrevis and Gurney with the king. Oh, miserable is that commonweal where lords keep courts and kings are locked in prison. Wherefore stay we? On, sirs, to the court. Ay, lead me whither you will, even to my death, seeing that my brother cannot be released. Exeunt. Scene four. The Royal Palace. London. Enter Mortimer, Jr. The king must die, or Mortimer goes down. The commons now begin to pity him. Yet he that is the cause of Edward's death is sure to pay for it when his son is of age. 
and therefore will I do it cunningly. This letter, written by a friend of ours, contains his death, yet bids them save his life. Reads. Eduardum occideri nolite temeri bonum est. Fear not to kill the king, tis good he die. But read it thus, and that's another sense. Edwardum occideri nolite temeri bonum est. Kill not the king, tis good to fear the worst. Unpointed as it is, thus shall it go, that being dead, if it chance to be found, Matrovis and the rest may bear the blame, and we be quit that caused it to be done. Within this room is locked the messenger that shall convey it and perform the rest, and by a secret token that he bears shall he be murdered when the deed is done lightborn come forth enter lightborn art thou as resolute as thou wast what else my lord and far more resolute and hast thou cast how to accomplish it ay ay and none shall know which way he died but at his looks lightborn thou wilt relent relent ha <laughs> ha i use much to relent well do it bravely and be secret you shall not need to give instructions "'Tis not the first time I have killed a man. "'I learned in Naples how to poison flowers, "'to strangle with a lawn thrust through the throat, "'to pierce the windpipe with a needle's point, "'or whilst one is asleep, take a quill "'and blow a little powder in the ears, "'or open his mouth and pour quicksilver down. "'But yet I have a braver way than these. "'What's that?' "'Nay, thou shalt pardon me. "'None shall know my tricks.' I cannot how it is, so it be not spied. Deliver this to Gurney and Matrovis. Gives letter. At every ten miles end thou hast a horse. Take this. Gives money. Away, and never see me more. No. No, unless thou bring me news of Edward's death. That I will quickly do. Farewell, my lord. Exit. The prince I rule, the queen do I command. And with a lowly conge to the ground, the proudest lords salute me as I pass. I seal, I cancel, I do what I will. Feared am I more than loved. <laughs> Let me be feared. And when I frown, make all the court look pale. I view the prince with Aristarchus' eyes, whose looks were as breaching to a boy. They thrust upon me the protectorship, and sue to me for that that I desire while at the council-table grave enough and not unlike a bashful puritan first i complain of imbecility saying it is onus quam gravissimum till being interrupted by my friends susepi that provinciam as they term it and to conclude i am protector now now all is sure the queen and mortimer shall rule the realm the king and none rule us mine enemies will i plague my friends advance and what I list command, who dare control? My jaw sum quam qui posit fortuna nocere, and that this be the coronation day, it pleaseth me, and Isabel, the queen. Trumpets within. The trumpets sound, I must go take my place. Enter the young king, the queen, the bishop of Canterbury, champion and nobles. Long live King Edward, by the grace of God, king of England and lord of Ireland. If any Christian, heathen, Turk, or Jew, dares but affirm that Edward's not true king, and will avouch his saying with the sword, I am the champion that will combat him. None comes. Sound trumpets. Trumpets sound. Champion, here's to thee. Gives a purse. Lord Mortimer, now take him to your charge. Enter soldiers with Kent prisoner. What traitor have we there with blades and bills? Edmund, the Earl of Kent. What has he done? I would have taken the king away perforce, as we were bringing him to Killingworth. Did you attempt his rescue, Edmund? Speak. Mortimer, I did. He is our king, and thou compelst this prince to wear the crown. Strike off his head. He shall have martial law. Strike off my head. Base traitor, I defy thee. My lord, he is my uncle and shall live. My lord, he is your enemy and shall die. Stay, villains. Sweet mother, if I cannot pardon him, entreat my lord protector for his life. Son, be content. I dare not speak a word. Nor I, and yet methinks I should command. But seeing I cannot, I'll entreat for him. 
My lord, if you will let my uncle live, I will requite it when I come to age. Tis for your highness good and for the realms. How often shall I bid you bear him hence? Art thou king? Must I die at thy command? At our command, once more away with him. Let me but stay and speak. I will not go. Either my brother or his son is king, and none of both them thirst for Edmund's blood. And therefore, soldiers, whither will you ail me? Soldiers hail Kent away to be beheaded. What safety may look at his hands, if that my uncle shall be murdered thus? Fear not, sweet boy. I'll guard thee from thy foes. Had Edmund lived, he would have sought thy death. Come, son, we'll ride a-hunting in the park. And shall my uncle Edmund ride with us? He is a traitor. Think not on him. Come. Exeunt. Scene five. Barclay Castle. Enter Matrevis and Gurney. Gurney, I wonder the king dies not, being in a vault up to the knees in water, to which the channels of the castle run, from whence a damp continually ariseth. That there enough to poison any man, much more a king brought up so tenderly. And so do I, Matrevis. Yes, the night I opened but the door to throw him meat, and I was almost stifled with the savour. He hath a body able to endure, more than we can inflict. And therefore now let us assail his mind another while. Send for him out thence, and I will anger him. But stay, who's this? Enter Lightborn. My lord protector greets you. Gives letter. What's here? I know not how to conster it. Gurney, it was left unpointed for the nonce. Edwardum oxidere noliti temeri. That's his meaning. Know you this token? I must have the king. Gives token. I stay a while thou shalt have answers straight aside this villain's sent to make away the king aside i thought as much aside and when the murder's done see how he must be handled for his labor per eat ista let him have the king what else here is the key this is the lake do as you are commanded by my lord i know what i must do get you away Yet be not far off, I shall need your help. See that in the next room I have a fire, and get me a spit, and let it be red hot. Very well. Need you anything besides? What else? A table and a feather bed. That's all? Aye, aye. So when I call, you bring it in. Fear not you that. Here's a light, to go into the dungeon. Gives a light, and then exit with Matrevis. So now must I about this gear... Ne'er was there any so finely handled as this king shall be. Pah, here's a place indeed with all my heart. Who's there? What light is that? Wherefore comes thou? To comfort you, and bring you joyful news. Small comfort finds poor Edward in thy looks. Villain, I know thou comest to murder me. To murder you, my most gracious lord? far is it from my heart to do you harm the queen has sent me to see how you were used for she relents at this your misery and what eyes can refrain from shedding tears to see a king in this most piteous state weep'st thou already list the while to me and then thy heart where it as gurney's is or as matrevis is hewn from the caucasus yet will it melt ere i have done my tale this dungeon where they keep me is the sink wherein the filth of all the castle falls o oh, villains and there in mire and puddle have i stood this ten days space and lest that i should sleep one plays continually upon a drum they give me bread and water being a king so that for want of sleep and sustenance my mind's distempered and my body's numbed and whether i have limbs or no i know not 
oh would my blood dropped out from every vein as doth this water from my tattered robes <laughs> tell isabel the queen i looked not thus when for her sake i ran at tilt in france and there unhorsed the duke of clarimont oh speak no more my lord this breaks my heart lie on this bed and rest yourself a while these looks of thine can harbour naught but death i see my tragedy written in thy brows yet stay a while forbear thy bloody hand and let me see the stroke before it comes that even then when i shall lose my life my mind may be more steadfast on my god what means your highness to mistrust me thus what means thou to dissemble with me thus these hands were never stained with innocent blood nor shall they now be tainted with a king's <sighs> forgive my thought for having such a thought one jewel have i left oh, receive thou this giving jewel still fear i and i know not what's the cause but every joint shakes as i give it thee oh if thou harbourst murder in thy heart let this gift change thy mind and save thy soul know that i am a king oh at that name i feel a hell of grief where is my crown gone gone and do i remain alive you're all watched my lord lie down and rest but that grief keeps me waking i should sleep for not these ten days have these eyes lids closed now as i speak they fall and yet with fear open again oh wherefore sit'st thou here if you mistrust me i'll be gone my lord no no for if thou mean'st to murder me thou wilt return again and therefore stay sleeps he sleeps king edward waking oh let me not die yet stay oh stay a while how now my lord something still buzzeth in mine ears and tells me if i sleep i never wake this fear is that which makes me tremble thus and therefore tell me wherefore art thou come to rid thee of thy life maltravis come enter matravis and gurney <laughs> i am too weak and feeble to resist assist me sweet god and receive my soul run to the table how <laughs> oh, spare me or dispatch me in a trice matrevis brings in a table so lay the table down and stamp on it but not too hard lest you bruise his body king edward is murdered i fear me that this cry will raise the town and therefore let us take horse and away tell me sirs was it not bravely done excellent well take this for thy reward gurney stabs lightborn who dies come let us cast the body in the moat and bear the kings to mortimer our lord away exeunt with the bodies scene six the royal palace london enter mortimer jr and matravis is done matravis and the murderer dead ay my good lord i would it were undone matravis if thou now growst penitent i'll be thy ghostly father therefore choose whether thou wilt be secret in this or else die by the hand of mortimer gurney my lord is fled and will i fear betray us both therefore let me fly fly to the savages i humbly thank your honour 
Exit. As for myself, I stand as Jove's huge tree, and others are but shrubs compared to me. All tremble at my name, and I fear none. Let's see who dare impeach me for his death. Enter the Queen. Ah, Mortimer, the King my son hath news, his father's dead, and we have murdered him. What if he have? The King is yet a child. Ay, ay, but he tears his hair, and wrings his hands, and vows to be revenged upon us both. Into the council chamber he is gone, to crave the aid and succour of his peers. Oh, I me, see where they come, and they with him. Now, Mortimer, begins our tragedy. Enter King Edward the Third, lords and attendants. Fear not, my lord. Know that you are a king. Villain! How now, my lord? Think not that I am frightened by thy words. My father's murdered by thy treachery, and thou shalt die, and on his murdered hearse thy hateful and accursed head shall lie, to witness the world that by thy means his kingly body was too soon interred. Weep not, sweet son. Forbid me not to weep. He was my father, and had you loved him half so well as I, you could not bear his death thus patiently. But I fear you conspired with Mortimer. Why speak you not unto my lord the king? Because I think scorn to be accused. Who is the man dare say I murdered him? Traitor, in me my loving father speaks, and plain saith, "'Twas thou that murdered him. But hath your grace no other proof than this? Yes, if this be the hand of Mortimer. Showing letter. Aside. False gurney hath betrayed me and himself. Aside. I feared as much. Murder cannot be hid. Tis my hand would gather you by this. What thither thou didst send a murtherer? What murtherer? Bring forth the man I sent. Ah, Mortimer, thou knowest that he is slain, and so shalt thou be too. Why stays he here? Bring him to the hurdle, drag him forth, hang him, I say, and set his quarters up, but bring his head back presently to me. For my sake, sweet son, pity Mortimer. Madam, entreat not, I will rather die than sue for life unto a paltry boy. Hence with the traitor, with the murderer. Base fortune. Now I see that in thy wheel there is a point to which when men aspire they tumble headlong down. That point I touched, and seeing there was no place to mount up higher, why should I grieve at my declining fool? Farewell, fair queen. Weep not for Mortimer, that scorns the world, and as a traveller goes to discover countries yet unknown. Suffer you the traitor to delay. Mortimer, Jr., is taken away by First Lord and attendants. As thou receivedst life from me, spill not the blood of gentle Mortimer. This argues that you spilt my father's blood. I spill his blood? No! Ay, madam, you, for so the rumour runs. That rumour is untrue. For loving thee is this report raised on poor Isabel. I do not think her so unnatural. My lord, I fear me it will prove too true. Mother, you are suspected for his death, and therefore we commit you to the tower, till further trial be made thereof. If you be guilty, though I be your son, think not to find me slack or pitiful. Nay, to my death, for too long have I lived, when as my son thinks to abridge my days. Away with her, her words enforce these tears, and shall pity her if she speaks again. Shall I not mourn for my beloved lord, and with the rest accompany him to his grave? Thus, madam, tis the king's will you shall hence. He hath forgotten me. Stay, I am his mother. That boots not. Therefore, gentle madam, go. Then come, sweet death, and rid me of this grief. Exit. Re-enter First Lord with the head of Mortimer, Jr. My lord, here is the head of Mortimer. Go fetch my father's hearse, where it shall lie. And bring my funeral robes. Exeunt attendants. Accursed heads, could I have ruled thee then as I do now? Thou hast not hatched this monstrous treachery. Here comes the hearse. Help me mourn, my lords. Re enter attendants with the hearse and funeral robes. Sweet father, here unto thy murdered ghost I offer up this wicked traitor's heads, and let these tears distilled from mine eyes be witness to my grief and innocency. Exeunt. End of Act 5 End of Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe